So I'm a little bit annoyed about my technique from, from the Armageddon game, but I think in general I got a pretty good position in that one, and I think I controlled my nerves, and I used my time very well. So pretty happy with the result. The way I got it wasn't great, but, you know, that's Armageddon. Do you mind taking us through that line? Was it... Yeah, was so it king it was, f1 or what was yeah, the line so was david's right gonna when, pull up the right board when i played this g3 d2 um i just it, it was to play king f1 and then i i just panicked i thought knight d5 was playable but i can play rook d2 knight e3 king and king e1 and i think it's winning because there are no good checks basically yeah this is just stupid it's just winning it's just over um yeah like knight c2 king d1 knight e3 king c1 knight g2 king king d1 i mean pretty terrible so yeah, this is just simply winning, and um, and then then like I th so like when I decided I couldn't go king f one, then I played queen b four, and this allows rook d four, and then I mean, and then it's I'm still better, but actually the problem is as as I started to realize during the game, uh, Magnus can basically get this. Uh, actually, wait, I took on d two, right? Yeah, I took on d two. As I realized during the game, Magnus can try to sack the knight for the two pawns on the queen side and just make a draw. So I kind of had to start start playing for the cheese at some point, and. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he he definitely misplayed it when he let me get this king to the king side. Um, I still thought I had a chance to win here, by the way. Um, but yeah, he played somewhere around here when he let my king get to f4. I think that's when it's, of course, it's it's fine and he shouldn't be losing. But now there are tricks that exist. I think if he had kept the king like on e, e7 and e6, f6 and just put the rook on a6, I don't really know what I'm doing there. Um, but once he let me get the king to f4, and then I got this h4, h5, it starts getting really, really tricky. And he was too low on time, and he ended up flagging um, when, when all was said and done. Did you, did you allow rook takes g3 in that final position where Magnus flagged purposely to, to make him think a little bit and question that rook takes g3, maybe you have f4 on the line? Or what, what were you, did you uh, well, play king? Actually, actually, I just blundered. I thought I had rook c5. I th thought I could sack the rook, but you have king b6 at the end. Um, uh, no, that's just a blunder by me. That's, uh, pretty, that's pretty terrible, too. When you play King but, but, H five, it gave him pause, so we thought maybe there was a part of that. Go ahead, sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're, that's like that's like when I when I accidentally was a genius last year against Mamad Yarov in the Armageddon game, where I was supposed to take something, I didn't take it, and then he couldn't reach and get the queen. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was by accident. Like that was just accidental. Although it was brilliant in, in some kind of weird way, but yes, this was simply I. Yeah, it's the same kind of accidental brilliance because you have to reach and grab the pawn. I mean, it's like one of these games that you play in Washington Square Park when you're like 10 years old and you play one of these, these, these African-American guys and like they, they, they try to block your hand or they do something and you can't play the move and you run out of time and you owe them like 20 bucks. Um, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of but. But yeah, so that, that was just a blunder. I thought I'd rook c5, but I don't. So. Well, I, I want to go back. Maybe this wasn't brilliant, playing king h5 and causing Magnus pause with rook g5 check but you know what i'm talking about right it's like when you go to reach and they just they like, put their arm out and they uh, i know i know exactly what you're yeah. talking about it's a it's a classic park trick right yeah, they make yeah. it difficult or uh, in some cases people literally take the queen and don't give it to you if you need it but i do want to go back to the game because yes okay maybe this wasn't brilliant in the end but it did cause magnus to lose on time but you had some brilliant moves in this game in fact the preparation we have to go back to this line where you allowed knight takes d4 and played bishop to g6 i don't want you to reveal any more than you need to at home but we were we were pretty hyped at this point and singing your praises in terms of what you had clearly brought to the board with a four minute time advantage against Magnus Carlsen. What can you tell us about this line that works so well? Yeah, I mean, Magnus has played this Bishop G4 line and the Queen's Gambit declined a few times, so I was, I was vaguely aware of it. Um, I think in general, the good thing is since I don't actually play every tournament under the sun, I can show some of these ideas because I don't have to play again for a long time. That, that helps. Uh, you know, if I had to go play like a Grand Chester or some of these events that I'm sure Fabiano is playing, for example, uh, I almost certainly would not have played this in the Armageddon game. Um, but yeah, I, th I think Magnus actually just, he, he assumed that I blundered a pawn um, and he, he was wrong because after Rook F8, Bishop, Bishop F2, Black's in a lot of trouble. And he also missed this very nice tactic with, um, with uh, was it Knight F4? Um, it took me a second to spot it, but he, he missed it. And um, yeah, this, this Queen B3 is really nasty, actually. I think it more or less just wins the game for White. Um, I mean, he just missed, he missed the tactic. I mean, maybe he didn't see Rook D6, maybe he thought Rook E8, rook but then there's Queen D5. But after Knight F4, Rook D6 is just completely winning for White, so... Yeah, I mean, it should have it should have been very smooth. Obviously, I messed it up, but I, I got what I wanted for sure. Magnus doesn't lose in Armageddon that often. In fact, we were talking about the stats, but you you got the job done here uh, in Armageddon. 
showing uh, showing that uh, the preparation can get it done. Did you did you have this opening ready in case you got an Armageddon battle against Magnus? I mean, we can see the stats there just because he tends to like that format. You've said earlier in the event that you're not necessarily a huge fan of Armageddon, but you've chosen some really great approaches. You beat Fabiano with Black in what felt like just really a dialed in a dialed in approach here with Magnus, a very dialed in approach. So. What can you tell us about your thoughts and what you're putting into the openings you're choosing in this tiebreaker? Yeah, I mean, I think I just try to play good shots. But on the other hand, when you play principled, like I did yesterday, um, it was just a poor, poor choice, and I just got steamrolled by Fabiano. So, uh, I mean, I, I think the openings, if you make the right choice, you look like a genius, but it's very easy to make the wrong choice and look like a complete fool, like I did yesterday. So, um, I mean, it, it, there wasn't a whole lot that went into it. I just did not expect Magnus to repeat, so it's one of those things that I, I kind of had ready to play against anybody. Okay. Did you expect him to play what he played in the classical game? Because I was wondering, you went into the confessional and talked about some of those lines. How happy or unhappy were you with his choice in classical? Yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, twice I've been right and once I've been wrong. So, uh, what's the first? There, there was an early one where I was right. Who who, who repeated um, or didn't repeat? Ali Reza, yeah. I think Ali Reza didn't repeat against me. He played one thing in the, in the classical game, then he changed it up. Um, or maybe Fabiano was only the second one, but I basically thought Fabiano would not play the same thing, and then he did, and of course it, it went very badly. Um, but I sort of thought Magus would not play the same thing. So when it, it comes down to whether you think they're going to play the same thing, and in the 10 minutes, whether you try to prepare something, uh, if they repeat the classical game. And I, I had a feeling Magus would change it up, um, and he did, so yeah, it worked out. And uh, Hikaru, you've narrowed the gap to Magnus. We heard you in the confessional talk about how he has two whites in the last three rounds. You have two blacks. What's going to be your strategy there to try and uh, close the gap, overtake him? I mean, it's, it's, it's very hard to know. I think, I mean, the, the one advantage I have is that I, I still have to play Ding, I think, with the white pieces. That's if, if you picked anyone in the term to have white against, that's probably the player I want to have white against. Um, at the end, I, I think in general, it's just try to play good chess. Um, I do feel that the two remaining games I have with the black piece against Ali Reza and Prague, they're very ambitious players. And I do think that Ali Reza is going to win today, which is going to definitely boost his confidence. So I expect a fight tomorrow. And if I play well, good things will happen. If I don't, bad things will happen. So it's actually really straight forward you are uh within half a point i guess to magnus as as you pointed out it's, it's going to come down to whether you play well and and have fun do you mind giving giving us your opinions on the two games that are still in action before you leave yeah so um actually the more the more i look at so fabio's game he's doing horribly i mean basically as i said in the other broadcasts all these lines were white sacks on g5 i feel like white's always getting d4 and f4 almost always in the variations where white's doing well you're getting d4 f4 fabiano hasn't gotten either of these moves in f4 is not playable d4 i think isn't playable here and after queen f3 knight h7 followed by king f8 i mean it just looks to me like black is simply winning here uh so this does not look good at all for fabiano i think there's a very good chance that he's going to um he's going to lose this game a very very good chance i would say and were you surprised on the other board that Prague went for the same line that Fabiano did against you back in round two, mm -hmm. but spent a lot of time on the clock. So either either maybe somehow missed that game or or didn't didn't know exactly where he wanted to try to improve on Fabiano's play. But Dingley Ren was very happy to get this line and seems to be in a pretty good spot here. But I mean, this is all very confusing because both players use a lot of time. This is not a situation where Ding blitzed out every move like I did against Fabiano. If Ding was blitzing every move up to that point, that would make sense. But neither player is blitzing out the moves. So I'm a little bit confused at exactly what was going on. I mean, my personal view is that probably Ding came with his preparation and he's just not doing anything else besides that. He's just going to trust his preparation. He's not looking close at the details um, and he just shows up and plays. So uh, that part I understand from Ding's perspective. From Prague's perspective, I'm also a little confused as to why he spent so much time. Um, honestly, as I look at the position now, I, it's very, very hard to judge. Um, I, I think that Prague, Prague is a little bit better, if I had to guess here, just because of the two bishops. Um, and it doesn't look to me so obvious how black black can't get the rook to f8 and e3 probably doesn't work here so if you don't have those obvious ideas i mean maybe there's rook e8 followed by e3 i could see that making some sense um actually i think that's probably the best try because otherwise white's going to go a5 a6 and i think that long term white white probably will be a little bit better so wow. that one has a long way to go okay that's uh that's pretty pretty uh interesting evaluation there yeah it's very different fabiano played that played f3 against you right and this is a completely different structure than what you got there so well i mean without without f3 i mean it can look kind of dangerous to play but also if you have time to prepare i think it's completely fine what Prague did so okay. I, I mean i i don't know i think that game is going to depend a lot on the clock it's going to depend a lot on who's able to move quickly at the critical moments i think they get into a scramble 
that'll give Prague a big advantage because he's such a great rapid player specifically. So I, I think if they, if they get low on time, that's going to be Prague will probably get huge chances to win this game. And it's a matter of whether Ding can kind of figure it out um, before then. Although it looks like Prague's down half an hour, so time probably won't come into play. All right. Well, this was awesome. This was an awesome day. It's uh, always disappointing for us as commentators. We're just going to share. We often refer to you as our fourth commentator uh, in, in the crew downstairs, um, visiting the confessional booth pretty consistently. We enjoy it. So it's disappointing. What, 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 what do you want me to say? Exactly. You don't have to say anything. I'm just saying. Happy or make them angry. I mean, there's no in between. It's, dis it's disappointing when you leave early because we missed your uh, your visits to the booth. So Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say, though, that it is great to see someone like Prague doing that specifically because he is he does represent a new generation. He's one of the young kids. Um, and to see him kind of doing that, perhaps someone who, who could be more... Um, uh, more more accessible and, and be more um, communicative in general, I think uh, could be good, could be good for the future. So I'm actually quite happy to see that Prague's doing that because I think um, when you look towards the future, I mean, sure, I'll be around a few more years. Magnus and Fabi probably will be, but these kids are the future of the game. Um, so I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see that Prague is doing that here. And I think, uh, I think it, you know, the future, future is bright, especially for the Indians. Yeah. Do you think the confessional booth should be a feature at more events, more super tournaments? I mean, I think the thing is, some people feel comfortable speaking in English. Some people don't. I mean, maybe there's a way to do it in, in your, your own native tongue, obviously. I think that's probably a more practical idea if you want to do it in, in a more serious way because not everybody speaks English well. Um, and they're going to feel very nervous and awkward anyway. So that might be the way that you do it. I think still... Most people probably prefer not to. I think a lot of people are still part of the uh, older generation. The, the, the thoughts are, you know, you try to focus only on the game. You don't want to do all these gimmicky sort of things. Um, but I, I think on, on one hand, it actually can sort of make you more relaxed and, and sort of enjoy it more. Um, and, and also, I think sometimes talking out loud can be a good thing. Like, I think Prague, unfortunately, he was, he was lost against me when I found this line, but he noticed the blunder when he started talking out loud. I'm not sure he would have noticed that otherwise. Um, so there might be something to it that it could be, could be, uh, could be beneficial. We certainly agree. It's definitely beneficial for the fans. And, uh, yeah, we saw that same clip from Prague in real time. So, well, Hikaru, this is awesome. Despite the fact that we are going to miss you for the rest of the round, uh, we wish you congratulations, of course, for getting the job done in Armageddon. A little revenge, I guess, from losing to Magnus earlier in the event in Armageddon. But... Uh, you but guys no. are overhyping it. I mean, yeah. like, you're we, overhyping it. You guys made it hype. It was awesome. When you guys play, it, it does tend to deliver. So this was a lot of fun, and thank you for joining us. Sure, no problem. All right. Congratulations on the match win against Magnus. How are you feeling? Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's I guess, nice to win. But on it, I'm going to be honest. I know people hate me for saying this. I mean, it's just Armageddon. I don't really care that much about it. Like, it's it's nice, I guess, to get the win. But, you know, win or lose the Armageddon, I really look at the classicals being the more important portion. Uh, but certainly to get that extra half point in terms of standing uh, was uh, was nice, I guess you could say. That was something that I was wondering about because I remember the exact words, you know, just now that you said after your victory over Ali Reza and Armageddon. So I mm -hmm. was going to, you know, I was, I was telling Fiona, I was like, you know, I wondered because it's Magnus and because of course of the standings, if you're going to, if you know, if we're going to hear the same thing or maybe a little bit more, you know, uh, happiness. But as you mentioned, uh, yeah, I mean, it is the half point poster in the standings with three rounds to play. So it is, it is going to be uh, an important half point potentially going forward. Yeah. I mean, I guess when I look at the tournament overall, my general attitude is I hope it's decided in the classical portion. I hope whether it's myself or Magnus or, or Prague, for example, that, that it comes down to classical, not down to these uh, these uh, clown fiesta games, which are called Armageddon personally. But I mean, we'll, we'll see if that's the case or not. Um, yeah, but but I, I still felt like I played played quite well in the Armageddon anyway. So I was, I was pretty pleased with the way I played up until that critical moment when I didn't play King F1. We will get to that. Shall we start with the classical games uh, game first? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so obviously I played this F3 system, which I have a career 0-2 score against Magus with. I lost him in that the worst game of my life, uh, the one where I was plus 10 against him in the Zurich Chess Challenge, I think in 2014 or 2015. That's the first thing. Um, and then I also lost him in Baku, Azerbaijan as well um, in uh, in this, this uh, same variation of the Nimzo. So I have a bad score, but I also felt like I wanted to try and play. And, you know, honestly, at this point in my career as well, I definitely am, uh, 
I'm happier to take some risks against someone like Magnus. If I lose again, who really cares? I've already lost him enough enough times to last a lifetime. <laughs> Another loss is not going to mean anything really. Um, and you know, certainly if I get a win, that would be huge. So, so generally speaking, I felt like it was it was better to take some chances today against Magnus rather than play something very boring and try to make a quick draw. Um, but then, of course, in classic Mag Magnus fashion, he played pretty much the most solid line that he could with this D five and um and and C five. Did that yeah. surprise you? I mean, I obviously prepared for it. I mean, I, he played D5 against me in Zurich as well. It went D5, A3, and then he played Bishop E7. Um, so that's another line he could have played with E4 takes takes. I think he played E5 in that game. He played uh, E5, E5 then, D5. although we discussed there's also C5, right, which is a bit more common. But he decided to take on C3. Very solid, yeah? Yeah, I mean that this is the old main line. If you're if you're you know you you learn with Russian trainers or if you grew up thirty years ago, this is how you play. You play C five, C five, knight D five. It's extremely. I mean, I guess in the old days they they used to take with the pawn more for the structure. I mean, obviously there are famous games like, I mean, with a structure like what's it, Capablanca, Aliakin, and and things like that. Um, but of course, you know, it's not the nineteen twenties anymore. It's two thousand twenties. Um, so so yeah, like he played knight D five, of course, most solid approach and um. Yeah, I mean, all, all this was well known up until um, up until yeah, we saw uh, Queen B two. This move here, at least in practice, was not as common, right? As Queen B three, we were checking the database. We were also checking and making sure that we weren't missing any uh, French league games, just in case it was a preview of uh, today's battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Of course, because there are people who are who are um, who who work with me who 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 very rudely decide to play play the preparation. Um, <laughs> But but yeah no obviously that this this was something um that I came with for uh, came up with for today's game and I mean knight d seven I looked at, I hadn't actually looked at knight a six uh, I think knight d seven is a little bit better um but yeah he played knight a six and basically while I was thinking before playing I was kind of wondering myself what I was supposed to do if he played it and and the computer I guess says you can take on a six but I feel like the line is just not really very human honestly um with knight e two knight c six um. And then I think you go, you go like, uh, what's the move here? Is it knight d4 or something? Yeah, but yeah, but like yeah. it's it's like yeah, but I mean it's like castles knight e5, and I mean I I just I wasn't sure because I don't really like the mm -hmm. structure that much in this position. Um, I mean I, I guess white's fine after knight d4, but it, it's really hard to judge what's actually going on. Um. And so I didn't really think I could be much better. And so I was like, okay, I know against knight d7, you're supposed to play knight h3. So I thought I would, I would try to basically play on principle. Um, but unfortunately, it really peters out in a hurry here after after e5. Um, what did I play? Knight f2, bishop e6, and yeah, knight d3, I guess. Um, I mean, already here, I think it's very hard to prove an advantage. I mean, I I, I think I, I... Did Magnus say something in confessional that I should have played on or something? I, I heard something, but... Um, we didn't but basically, hear Magnus's confessional. Yeah, but but basically, I just I didn't really feel like I got anything like that I wanted here. Queen c seven was not what I was expecting. Actually, I thought he was going to play rook c eight here. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't really sure because if I go king f two, black and sack the rook with with I think knight c five. Oh like, wow! Takes takes so and, take, takes and rook mm -hmm. c five. Maybe like something like this. I, I mean, I don't know. This looks scary to me. Yeah, you don't um, want to be going forward. Yeah. Yeah, and I also realized there's also f5 as well. There's also f5, actually, which might be very strong, too, after king f2. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I just, I, I didn't like this, and I was really surprised to see him play queen c7. Um, and then, unfortunately, I mean, maybe there was a way to play on, but I, I just, I didn't really see anything um, better than what happened in the game. At least on this depth of this, uh, Chaz, the mentioned, it also agrees for the repetition. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, just hard. he also has bishop it, c4, but... yeah? It's just the problem yeah, I mean, is he's always threatening this move. I mean, the thing is, like, I think the computer says I can play queen b1, queen b1, bishop yeah, c6, and then you could try to, two. yeah, try to castle. But, but like, way. when I thought about this bishop with bishop c4, and let's just say castles, take six, knight c5, mm -hmm. I mean, sure, I have the two bishops, but I, I, the two pawns on c3 and a3 are very weak. And I mean, I guess the computer is just going to laugh and be like, okay, who cares? It's completely fine. But to me, I thought if anyone's better here, it's probably black. So the game yeah. came to a natural conclusion. How? Mm -hmm. What were your feelings like after this rather short classical game before the Armageddon? Yeah. So I mean, I think that um, I mean, I wasn't thrilled by it, but I mean, I still gained rating points. It's still a solid draw, so I'm not going to be too upset with it. But um, 
but I would have liked to have gotten more play, but still it is what it is. You can't, you can't always get, get play in this modern era when people are so well prepared. So you just move, move, move on. And uh, yeah, we went to the Armageddon game. Shall we pull it up? Um, yeah, we heard in the interview, this was something that we were also what we were, we were thinking, are you going to deviate? Is he going to deviate in the opening? We did see, of course, yesterday, for example, right? Fabiano. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so yeah, I mean, basically what happened is in between the games, like I, 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 I basically asked my wife whether I should play the same thing or play something different, play something random or play, play same name. So, um, and she basically said, play the same thing. So I did. And, um, and uh, and then Magnus deviated. Um, I'm not do sure what I would have done. Take your decisions like that. How often do you ask her for advice? I mean, whether it's asking her or flipping a coin or all these things. I mean, it's pretty standard these days. After all, I mean, I was I was I was basically gambling before the game anyway with in, in GameStop. So um, like it's kind of like whatever. It's that's sort of how I live my life these days. I just do everything randomly. Who cares? Just have fun, enjoy life. It's too short, and go from there. So. Um, yeah, like I, I, I basically just like it's just like take take some chances, have some fun, do whatever, and and go from there. Like hey, whether it's asking her, whether it's flipping a coin, I mean, all the, it's it's basically random chance. Basically, that's that's what it comes down to. Well, it worked out quite well in this case. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Magnus played this bishop g four line, and the queen's gambit declined. Um, and yeah, I played played this like knight e two line, and I mean, basically, what happened is is Magnus. I mean. Because I've made so many opening blunders against him over the years, he th he thought that I just blundered. Because if this is old me, um, prior to the pandemic, this is the sort of stupid stuff I did against him on the regular, which is uh, just make some kind of dumb blunder, hang a pawn, hang a piece, do something wrong in the opening, lose lose like lose like a child over and over. Um, so I think he just he he assumed that like that he was playing against me of 2017, 2016, uh, where I just would fold like a cheap suit. Um, but but unfortunately for Magnus, I actually was uh, what was ready. Um, and I, I, this was not a blunder by me. So this is something that you had, you had already seen it, not just the idea, but the exact position in your preparation. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, of course, of course. Yeah. But you were playing so um, fast. Perhaps he was thinking, oh, you're bluffing. You're just trying to go for speed, but you were very well prepared. And now yeah, well, it's, you're it's, dominating. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not about bluffing. It's that I just blundered mm -hmm. against him. I, I mean, <laughs> like when, when your record is so bad against someone, sure. I mean, he's a better player. Like, I think we'll all acknowledge that. But when you lose by a score of 14 to one, I mean, some of the some of the, what's going to happen is you're just you're blundering. You're, you're playing like an idiot. Um, so. So, yeah, I think he just thought that I had blundered like I've done it a million times, um, but I hadn't actually blundered. And then he, he blundered with 95 on this queen B3 trick. Um, and I thought everything I did here from here on, I thought I played this perfectly. Um, pretty much up until, up until I, I, I just like, I, I blundered like every, everything I did here was correct. I thought this was great. All great. All great. All great. Uh, and yeah, and here I was going to play King F1. And then I just, mm -hmm. I thought, I, I suddenly thought Knight E5. And, and after I, I just, I, I just, I, I mean, if I calculated King E1, I would have seen that the King escapes all the checks, but I, I just panicked. Uh, and then I played Queen B4 overlooking Rook D4, which by the way, I had seen, I think, um, in one of the other variations. But the reason that I miss Rook D4 here is because I expect him to go Rook E1. Rook E1. Um, Rook E1 looks like mm -hmm. the move because after takes. Ah, and then he promotes. Mm -hmm. Right. But I, but there I can take the Queen, King F2, Knight D3, ah, King E2, takes okay. King D1. And, and I mean, I have too many pawns. I have the wide peepos on both sides and I'm just winning. Mm -hmm. Um. But but yeah, and then, then he played rook d4, and then it's like, and then of course it's just like, okay, what have I done? Uh, I've messed it up. But he ended up making the final blunder at the end of the day here. And is this actually winning here? Can I? Is this winning? It, no, it's it never was winning, never giving it? a win. But we thought, especially you know, with the even with the one second acre in playing it over the board with six seconds, mm -hmm. obviously you you still have great chances to win. Although, yeah, I mean, but, well, the problem is he can sack like the five. knight for the two pawns. He can sack the knight for the two pawns. Did he have a chance to do so because he started running your king? Well, I, I think, him, but I think sad. I think his mistake his mistake was that he he didn't go rook a six. I think if he had gone rook a six somewhere around here after knight c five, king e three, rook a six, I don't I don't think I have any chances. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, probably he thought there was some trick like rook c two, king d six, rook c five, or something. He was obviously very low on time, but as long as he doesn't let me get towards the king side, I think that he should be he should be fine. But as soon as I got the king to a four and h four, then they're 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 tricks again. Like it's still completely fine. Black should draw the game, but now they're they're little stupid tricks with H five and everything else. Yeah, you got him thinking. And actually, you know, it's, it's I I heard a Danny was asking, hey, like, did you play Eric to like get him to think? But I had the same blunder. I was like, oh, he can't take a G three because of Rook C five, but he he's everything's in time. So like you said, it was a it, it turned out to be genius. Although 
maybe not your uh, full intention as uh, you also described your game against Pamidiara, but hey, you the win. Yeah, the win. I, I mean, I mean, obviously, like it was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't clean at the end, but it's still, I guess, a win. I mean, I, I should have won the game, and I, I mean, people were asking me like, what what did I say after the game? Um, and I was just, I was a little bit confused, like why Magnus was so serious, actually for, for anybody who's wondering, like, I basically said, like, I, I basically said, like, what's the big deal? You, you, you it was losing from the opening. Cause I, I was just kind of mm-hmm. confused why he was so angry about it because I mean, it's just a stupid Armageddon game. Like it's just doesn't matter at all. Um, for, for anybody who's wondering that that's, that's what I said. I was, I was just confused because like, it's a stupid Armageddon game. It doesn't really mean anything in the bigger picture. And yet I, I was, I was just confused for anyone who's wondering. Did he respond anything? No, I mean, he's like, yeah, I mean, he basically said, yeah, I, I just, I didn't understand because like, it's Armageddon, who cares? Like, it just doesn't matter at all. But um, yeah, I, I was just, I was just confused. Like that, for anybody who's wondering that that's, I was just confused because like, who cares? It's a stupid Armageddon game. Like, it doesn't mean anything at all. Like, whether I win, whether I lose, like, it's Armageddon, who cares? So. I actually yeah. have a, a question. I always feel watching those Armageddon games uh, here with the one second increment, I always feel it's impossible as long as it's still a game with a few pieces on the board. In, to me, it feels almost impossible to not flag. Do you think it's actually possible to keep playing with one just one second? Yeah, I mean, probably if you get down to one second, it's very hard. But I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. If Magus had been able to sack the knight for the two juicers on the queen side, he he would not have lost that end game. If we got to the three versus two on the king side, he would have drawn it even with one second on the clock. So, like, I, I'm a little bit a little bit skeptical that someone. I mean, maybe that's just Magus being Magus that he can do it, and and almost nobody else can. Or I mean, maybe I could, but um, but yeah, it, it is very tough when you get really long time. It's very hard. I think, for example, Fabiano, if he gets down to one second, there's no way he's ever going to survive. Um. So maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe more than one second. But on the other hand, you want the Armageddon's to be fair. And I actually think, even though um, in the in the uh, in the uh, players meeting before the event, you know, with Ferrugi and, and everything that was going mm-hmm. on, um, the players kind of uh, the like Magus thought the Black should win the majority of the of the Armageddon's with the current format. But as it's turning out, it's pretty balanced. So I think they actually have picked the right the the right format. Hey, Carl, was it a different time control last year for the Armageddon or? Two seconds or or no? No, no, it was the exact same. But Matt, but okay. the thing is, in the players' meeting, Matt was like, he thought that you get the one second on move sixty. Mm-hmm. So he's like, on move forty, this should give Black a huge advantage. And of mm-hmm. course, as we all realized, it was the same time control last year. But we thought that it would give Black a huge advantage. Magus wanted to be like a one second increment after move fifty uh, instead of move forty. But but still, at the end of the day, it's all you know, it's 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 all what it is. And I think the results actually speak for themselves from the standpoint that I think it's been pretty balanced um, for both sides. He carried the uh, out of the other two games. One of them actually, while you came on, ended in a draw. Prague against Ding, and I'm just curious how that ended so quickly. If you don't mind taking a quick look with us, sure. I mean, it looks great for Black. No, after I mean this H four, I really didn't like. I didn't like this H four at all. Um, but what Ding just offered a draw after Bishop F seven or something? Let's see. So yeah, here actually. The R engine was saying Bishop H5 was very strong for Black. I guess there's some ideas. Ah, queen out, se- queen, over. Queen, queen, yeah, Queen F7 and Rook G6, actually. Ooh, mm-hmm. ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was giving like a minus two advantage on a higher depth. But Ding, Ding went back to F7, and yeah, we didn't keep, we didn't see the finish here. And it looks like, yeah, he just offered a draw after this maneuver. So do you think it, it was, did he underestimate his position, or was it more like he's just happy to? Because it felt like this game, I mean, the momentum was in the side big time, or is he just, Stopping the bleeding, so to speak. I, I mean, honestly, I think I think yeah. he'll be happy to draw every game and just get out of here. That's that's okay. my honest he's, take. He's over um, it. Mm-hmm. That that's that's just my honest take. Yes. And let's take a quick look at the last remaining game, uh, Fabi against Ali Reza. He's got a four on the board. You were talking about one of those. Wait, how, how did Fa- how did Fabiano get to um to here? How did Fabiano get to this position actually? So we had knight e8, bishop e3. Oh, he, is... he didn't play he didn't play knight h7. Oh wow. Ah, he didn't go knight h7. Ah, and yeah, now you get to try the bishop, you get f4, and now it's very much game on again. Oh wow. Oh wow. Wow, wow, wowie. Wowie. Wowie yowie. So so what do you does white have enough compensation now? Is he just going to double up or something in the F file, or is the piece still going to count for Alareza for Ferruji? Um for Ferruji, yes. Um, 
No, but now it's going the other way, actually, because now it's super easy for Fabiano to play, and it's very hard for uh, for 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 Ali Reza to play this position. Actually, I mean, I think there's a good chance Fabiano is going to win now. Just looking at this position, I think it's going to be extremely hard, extremely hard for uh, for Ali Reza here. No, it's completely flipped. The script is flipped completely. I, I think it's. I mean, it's very. Oof! I would not want to be playing this position with uh for 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 Frugia, Frugia. So um, yeah, I think it's. Yeah, I think there's a good chance Fabi's going to win this game. But if they get low on time, I think I think Ali Rez is going to find a way to win. I think the the you know Achilles' heel for Fabiano probably for his whole career is that he's just not as good at, in blitz or bullet than than everybody else. Um, so if they can get into a scramble. I think I think Farouche has a great chance to win. Um, but I will say right now, this game is going to be decisive. This bearing is going to be a decisive in, game. This will not be a draw. Bearing in mind that you are playing Ali Reza tomorrow, do you feel? It would be beneficial for you if Ali Reza lost this game in classical to Fabi. Um, I would actually say the opposite. I think if Ali Reza wins, he's much more likely to want to try hard, and if he loses, I think it's, he's much more likely to be rock solid. Um, so I, I would say, uh, I, I would say in general, I, I actually would argue it's better if he wins this game. But ultimately, if we're if we're being honest, I, I don't I don't particularly care either way. Uh, I'm just going to try to play chess, and what happens happens. Car not to harp on all these different time controls, but one thing I was wondering about you're playing this with plus 10, right? Instead of plus 30, do you feel like that plays a major role? Like, obviously, it's less time, but also, even mm -hmm. you know, players I, I assume are just not used to that because when you have 30 seconds, like you do have a little time to think, you're even notating. Does the 10 seconds make it feel more like a blitz game, I, or have you not had enough experience yet in this event? With I that? mean. I've, I've, I've gotten low on time in a couple of games that I've won, to be honest. So, like, I, I do feel it. Um, but I've never been in a tricky spot. I mean, I think 10 seconds is enough to where it feels kind of, like, rapid. Um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, really, uh, doesn't, doesn't really matter that much to me whether it's 10 or 30 seconds. But, again, I do think that for someone like Fabiano, the, in the scrambles, it's going to be very, very tough, I would say. I was thinking of Fabiano because the game he lost to Magnus, that's like the vintage Magnus sort of end game squeeze. Mm -hmm. Still, it feels like if Fabi had the 30 second increment, that it feels yeah, like. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, think, I think, I think, I think for me though, I probably prefer 10 to 30. I, I think mm -hmm. I, I always like, like more. Um, so, um, so, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's what I would say is I, I prefer, I mean, I, I prefer, uh, I prefer 10 seconds to 30 seconds in general, but it's not a big deal to me either way. I mean, I just show up and try to play, play, play some chess and, and be competitive. And if I am, I am, if I'm not, I'm not, but um, at least today it, it appeared to be good enough. I just had one final question, which I meant to ask already last couple of days, but never got around to it. On the first rest day, you went up the pulpit rock. Was it mm -hmm. your first time or not? And how did you? No, enjoy it hike? was. It was. It was. It was not my first time. It was actually my second time. I went up there. Went up there. I think in 2015, if I remember correctly. So it was not my first time. Um, I mean the views are beautiful up there. I, I really enjoy it. I think for me, one of the things these days when I play tournaments, a lot of it comes down to like the location, the organizers, things of this nature. Because obviously, uh, I I don't play chess professionally anymore. I, I mean, I try to be competitive, but I don't play the full schedule of tournaments anymore. I mean, if anything, I said this uh, before. Uh, I try to emulate my great hero Vichy and on just play a few tournaments here, there a little sprinkle and and try to try try to win them and and just just do great as much as I can. Um, so. For me, I mean, a lot of it comes down to all these different little things. And in terms of uh, in terms of um, this event specifically, like the Pulpit Rock, it, it reminds me a lot of of two of my. I mean, I would say more like one. One of my favorite places in the world, which of course is uh, which of course is Vancouver or British Columbia in general. And they're the nature, the, tr the green trees, the mountains, the water. It's all very very similar. Um, and that's why, like, on the one hand, if if, if Ding actually drops out, it's probably going to ruin my plans. I, I really was hoping to go and do some hiking, maybe in like the late late summer or maybe August into September, go up to Whistler and everything. If Ding drops out, then that's going to ruin those those great plans that I have laid out. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's just really nice because it's it's very familiar territory in a way, even if it's a different country. So uh, yeah, it's um it's it's a great place to be, and I, I've enjoyed uh I, I've I, I've enjoyed being in Norway a lot. Do you think the odds of uh, Ding uh, forfeiting his uh, title are going up at the moment? I mean, I, I just don't really think about it. Uh, but the only reason I brought up because a lot of people, a lot of people incorrectly assume that I just make stuff up. But as they'll see in the lie detector, it's going to be very disappointing for the people who think that it's all some big act uh, when I say these things. It's going to be really, really disappointing for them um, to deal with because it'll ruin their their view. Uh, shout out to all those idiots on Reddit. Um, 
but I would say that uh, you know, broad, broadly speaking, I'm not I'm not really thinking about it. It's just that um, it's it's just that people people are speculating and thinking that I'm just making stuff up and like I'd be happy and this that or the other thing. Like at this stage of my life, I don't really care about it all that much. I tr just try to play chess and have fun, um, and uh, and I'm, I'm I think I'm doing a good job of that. The car, just to confirm, sorry, I, I because the first time hearing it, we're gonna have a lie detector video uh coming out because I know yeah, there was I, one I, with I, Magnus yeah, and Levy mm -hmm. before and who are you with? Yeah, I just did it with, with Danny. Um I did okay. it with Danny and uh yeah, I'm just saying people are gonna people are gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> They're gonna be very disappointed because when can uh, we expect that? Uh, I'm not sure when it'll be out, okay. but I think, um, yeah, it's going to be very disappointing for all the people who think that, you know, I just make this stuff up and I'm just saying this, that, or the other thing when I feel the other way. And uh, fun fact, I said, I don't care if I become world champion and that was deemed to be the truth. So I'll leave it at, I'll leave, leave that one little nugget uh, well, for, for, for people out there. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just the people, people have been asking, asking about these different things. So um, yeah, but in general, I'm just happy to be here, have a good time, play chess and uh, be competitive. And I seem to be competitive, um, uh, at least, at least for now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. The Armageddon game between Prague and Ding has just started. I don't know if you want to stick around for that. If you want to go film your recap, just. Yeah, I'll probably go. I'll I'll probably go film. Uh, pro probably go film my recap in a second. But it, it looks it looks good for Prague. I mean, we'll see what happens with the uh with, with the game. Um, for anybody who's wondering, I don't actually spend much time on Reddit. I've but I have spent a good chunk of time on RGME lately. Uh, that's uh, I've, I'm just part of the ape community. So that that is actually where I do spend my time when I'm on Reddit these days. Not that terrible chess one. Um, for anybody who's wondering, but uh, that's just a little side note. I I, I love uh. Love, love being around my fellow apes. Um, but anyway, back to back to the chess. It looks like Prague is a great position on the opening here. He's going to go for rook c1, c4, e4. This is this is going to be a Prague's going to win this Armageddon game. All right. Well, you heard it here. Apes together are strong. Absolutely. I mean, that's that. Yeah. I, I I was spending my whole morning on that instead of studying chess, which I think is maybe a little bit embarrassing. I shouldn't say because people are going to think that I don't take chess seriously. But I was I was actually following it, and I've I've been I've been training GME for the last like month and a half. I think people people on my stream heard me talk about it even, um, and I've become pretty obsessed with it. And I, of course, I bought some calls uh, early today as well for anybody who's wondering. So yes, diamond hands, baby. <laughs> So is that what, just to be sure I understand correctly, is that what the tweet was referencing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, because I mean, I I bought them last week in the in in the in the high eighteens. Um, and yeah, today today was good. So yeah, so it it was a reference today. And sometimes when I sometimes when I see people on Twitter, they like they they think that I'm talking about chess. It it just it blows my mind that people can uh, actually can actually believe that. Um. Because it's it's kind it's kind of nuts. Uh, no, my tweet was obviously my tweet was obviously about GME. It was not um it had nothing to do with chess whatsoever. I, I mean, I very rarely tweet about chess. It's a very boring game. It's <laughs> it's a game that's hard to play, very little money, and then you can play actual games and, and do well. So yeah, it's uh, it, it had nothing to do with uh, nothing to do with chess whatsoever. Well, uh, Hikaru, we're gonna let you go film your recap and then enjoy an evening away from the boring game. Um, thank you so much for coming on. Congrats again uh, on the match win and best of luck for tomorrow. Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, but but anybody who's wondering, like, actually, if I had to give a comparison very briefly, like, I become kind of like Rajabov is what I become like. All, all, <laughs> all I want to talk about is like stocks like GME or AMC and then Bitcoin all, all day long. So I be, I become like one of those guys um, for anyone who's wondering. But yeah, anyway, enough enough of that nonsense. Yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow after I play against Ali Reza in round number, round number nine, right? Or what is eight, tomorrow? Eight. Round eight. number seven? Eight, eight? Okay, whatever. It's all the same thing. It's, it's all chess. So Doesn't matter. yeah, anyway, yeah. you guys. Yeah, same thing. Who cares? It's chess. See so you I tomorrow. Will, um, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Good luck. Take yeah. care, Ricardo. See you. Bye.